Hey guys, how's it going? Can you hear me? Hey, yeah, you sound good. All right, great. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Mike, you got your stuff set up there? <laughs> All right, maybe he's just getting, looks like it's connecting in ready. All right, so just uh, just so you know, I just see Alex here right now, but uh, we are, I'm recording this so that you don't have any audio. All right, Mike, you could try. Um, I was just using some headphones. But either way, if you don't have audio, we'll try, I'll try to still walk you through what we can today. I have some stuff here. But uh, again, I'm recording this, so if anybody comes in and um, knows that it will be on recording and what we're going to do today is Mike uh, had asked me a couple weeks ago to help him try to get an adjustment. Hey, Mike, try to get an adjustment to his 1943 MD, I believe is the exact model. And this is a model that um, I have done before. And uh, so when we get in here, first off, um, just note that we are using live electricity, obviously. So we want to, we're going to try to take our time just to get started so that we're not going to really take any, any high risks. So, um, Mike, we'll try to work through the chat to begin with. If you can answer some questions as I go, uh, can you hear me okay? yeah, no, I, no, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay, great. Oh, excellent. So yeah, that's, that's a good picture right there. So we're going to, we're going to work specifically mostly on geometry, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I know you do have the little spot right next to your flyback right there where the geometry buttons are. Now uh, you've done a really good job. I was, yes, I was going to mention that sometimes when you get in here, the cable management can be pretty off. And you definitely want to make sure that the cables are kind of out of the way because we're going to stick a screwdriver and to use that to adjust these potentiometers right down here in this cluster. So you've done a good job there where you've got the cables out of the way from like the flyback and then uh, the, the yoke and everything and then into the neck board. So you just like you've got it there, make sure it's clear to begin with. Um, now, just to note that you do not have to power, or you don't have to do this while it's powered on if you're not comfortable with that. Uh, first, Mike, do you have your screwdriver? Okay, I think that should be fine. As long as there's no conductivity between the handle and the edge of it. No, so, there's, it's all plastic at the top. Okay. And I have, there was like a little um, clip, like a pen clip type thing, which okay. I broke off and covered in tape, but looking at it, it doesn't go through the plastic. Okay. Yeah. Then that, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be fine anyway, but what, you know, it'll, uh, it, it shouldn't be a problem normally, but just to be safe, you always want to try to have at least a plastic handle. Yeah. And the handle is all plastic. Great. So that's just one thing to note here is to do that with a plastic handle. And um, like I said, you don't actually have to, you can make adjustments on these, and then go back and forth, turning the screen on and off if you, you know, were completely too nervous to do this while it's running. However, the way it's set up right now and with that screwdriver, and as long as you just use one hand while you're in here and don't just, you know, just don't ground it against anything, you'll be fine. Um, even if you did unintentionally ground it against something more than, you're probably fine. But, you know, let's just, just to be safe. And I'll do my best not to tell yeah. <laughs> you. I mean, you'll be, I'm sure you'll be fine. So what we'll do is, uh, first off, I know that this, the camera, we have it at the back here. Uh, yep. I didn't know if you wanted to try to describe maybe what your screen looks like with the 240p can, test. Well, yeah, I'll bring the, the camera around. Which test would you like me to, to show first? Okay, so let's start with uh, like the test for um the, the, grid. the yeah the grid just the the i usually go which which console are you using 
I'm using, I'm actually using a Pi, but I'm using the, okay. Super, or the Super Nintendo SNES. Okay, so I generally use the first grid pattern on there to start with. There, there's two grid patterns on there, you know? Yeah. Okay, great, yeah. Let me see if I, so, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can necessarily know. Okay, there so we go. if we're looking, yeah, that's a good picture. So if we're looking at the screen here, obviously you're, you got a gap up, up top. Yep. And then is there a slight gap at the bottom too? There is, there's a slight gap at the bottom and you might not be able to see, but right around the corners here, it flares out at the bottom. Okay, so what we'll do is um, we need to decrease the horizontal size on it okay. first off so that we can see the edges of this grid pattern on the screen, you know, fully. Yep. And then we'll what we're gonna try to do in is we'll go from there, we'll center the picture and then we'll expand it after that. So we'll try to center it horizontally and vertically and then that should also help us see any curves at the corners. Okay. So I'm move the camera back to the back. Yeah, go back to the back here. And I've actually got, funny enough, the the um, this is this is a, a board that's from the graveyard here, and it's it's the one that was destroyed in shipping. So it's it's got parts taken off it, but it has the same cluster of potentiometers, so I can help kind of guide you from this. And also pictures. So when I post edit this video, I'll put uh, pictures up on the screen so that people can see kind of um, what these are actually doing. So if I'm looking here, uh, mine, when I'm looking at my board, it says that the very first potentiometer that's the blue one by itself mm -hmm. over there says it's horizontal size. Is that what that's yours what says? Yeah, it has. It looks like it has a, a little arrow that points from H size right to it. Yes, yes. Yep. So that's we're gonna need to adjust that one. And what I want you to do is, uh, you personally look at the front of the screen. Yep. And try to just spin that and make sure that you're just you know one way will make it larger, one way will make it smaller. So just make it small enough uh, yep. to where it's you can see both edges. And then let me know when you're when you're at that point. So it looks like on the right side, this this test pattern doesn't doesn't have the the end of the the grid, but I can oh, see doesn't? both edges. Yeah, for some reason, it, it could okay. just be because I'm using a ROM or something. But it I was able to size it so that I can see the edge on the left and I can see where it terminates on the right. Okay, um, we'll we'll check another screen in a second too. But uh, that's fine. So we got that. We got both. So we could see all edges on there, right? Yep. Here, I'll uh, bring the camera. Yeah, the only thing is, I don't have the mounting point for the camera on this side. Oh, that's fine. You can just hold it for a second. That's uh, that adjusted. Okay, I see what you're saying. The right at the other edge. Okay. Yeah. Go back. Go back to screen where it's the main uh, choice screen. Sure. For a quick second. Okay. Great. Yeah, I can see that edge there a little bit better too. Yep. Uh, try the STMP or the color bars, the one right above the STMP first, that should have a grid pattern on it too, I think. This uh, one above that, yeah, that one. And then hit it again, hit the A button. There we go. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's just cutting off the edge on there, which yeah, fine. Hopefully that one of them will show up. But I do see how it's, it's kind of curving towards the inside. Is that on both sides or is it just mostly on the right side? Like the pin um, where it looks like a pillow almost or a bow? Is it yeah, it all towards I think, the center? I think hold on, I gotta I've gotta move myself back a little bit just to see it. So yeah, it it looks to me like it's kind of both sides. Okay. No, At least that's, that's what I that's noticed before. Yeah. So if they're both curving in, then we'll need to try and do a um, pin amp adjustment, which is okay. another one of those potentiometers. Okay. Yep. So you can set us down here, go back to um, pull the grids up and, and just see which one shows you the most, whether it's the top one that we were just on, or if it's the second one, I think that one's going to be too big vertically, but uh, pull them up and see which one looks best for you. So we'll, we'll try to adjust this pin amp real quick. 
I feel like it's the the first one. Okay, that's probably what. Okay, good. All yeah. right. So, if um, let me see on my board here again, it looks like the second. Trying to determine. No, that's vertical size. Okay, so it goes horizontal size, vertical size. Now our vertical size um, is there. And before let's let's stick to what we were doing, the vertical and horizontal. We're going to get it centered, and then we'll do the pin adjustment. Is the pin amp the next one over from that the one? Pin amp is the third one. Yeah, yes, that's right what it looks like. Yep, that's what it looks like. So that's the one we'll we'll adjust there. Now, vertical center. Let me check where that's at. So there's vertical size. Uh, vertical center is the other big blue one at okay. the top opposite of horizontal size that we just adjusted. You see it's okay. the very big odd one. Is right it top. that one right there? That one. That's vertical center. Yeah. So, this this guy right here. That guy right there. So what we want to try to do, and you can you don't have to turn my camera over there because that'll be tough. Yeah. But just just slowly turn that to try to center center vertically only your picture. And then um, when you feel like you've got it centered Maybe then you could take it. We could take a quick shot of it from your camera. Okay, so it, it wasn't too far off, at least from what I can tell. Okay, a little bit, a little bit further to go, I think. Okay. Okay, so to my eye, it doesn't look too far off here. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, because I'm not sure if you can see it from the camera view, but let me see if I can fix this. There we go. Um, there appears to be about the same amount of gapping, I guess. No, I was looking over here. Okay. But Here's the gapping here is a little bit smaller. So. Okay. so what we'll do next is go back to the... Um, Sorry to keep making you switch here. No, no, that's, that's fine. I just hope I don't make anybody sick. <laughs> no, you're fine. So go back to the back area mm -hmm. and then down here in the potentiometer area again. Try the um, one that we're going to do. What we're going to do is now you're going to expand the size a little bit on your vertical size. Okay. So that we can. So what you do is whichever one you, you want to push one of those edges all the way till it touches. And then yep. we can kind of work that center and tweak that perfectly. Okay. Uh, so vertical size is the second one right there. Second uh, one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Except yeah. blue. Yes, that right one. Here. Yep. And so try that out. And um, Okay. Just, yeah. So I've got it. The, the bottom left corner now is touching the, the edge. Okay. But that is the only one that is touching. So, so the try top. to get to the point where, like, the center of the line is either on the top or the bottom touching. Okay. Like the center point of your uh, vertical center, like right at the center of your right monitor. At the center of the monitor. The top All right. or the yep. bottom. Can do that. Pull my eyes back here. All right. So we've like got that. the top touching right now. We'll bring you back around. Okay, and take a sure. So that's excellent. Uh, let's straighten it out. There okay, go. so that's good. Now this is very normal, and um, what you know, it, it always is. It does tend to flare up a little bit at the corners. That's you know, on this these older tubes, especially yep. the forty threes. That's not like out of spec or anything. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, but this is good. This this looks like your yoke is pretty close to right on level. So we nice. don't have to worry about a screen tilt and, and changing that. But what you could do now is uh, that's actually probably good enough. It looks like it's pretty center. I don't know, but you could go in and tweak the gap in between there to make sure it's perfect if you want to. Okay. Um, but that's that's where I'd start. And then when we're done, we'll expand it so that we're using that as our overscan area after we adjust the rest of it. Okay. okay. That sounds great. So, um, I think we've got just about everything on here. Let's, 
take me around back to your backside of the monitor for a second and I'll uh, try to direct you what we'll, we'll try next. Um, now, horizontal center on this monitor is, is a bit more difficult to get to. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that your horizontal center is pretty good. But if it's not, it's a little bit trickier because it's not in the same spot. I see. And uh, so look at your screen and let me know. I mean, is there, when you're looking at it, we kind of need to do the same thing with the horizontal side. It's going to be more difficult. You might want to back out to a screen that's a solid color. Yeah. So you don't have that edge. Yep. Uh, you can use one of the solid color screens on there, the red, green, and blue color, color screens on the first menu or just probably the 240p test suite screen. Yeah, I'll use the 240p test suite screen. That seems to work. There, It is not centered. Um, there is probably almost maybe, I don't know, a little around maybe three eighths of an inch or something on the right side, whereas the left side is, is almost perfectly squared out. Yeah, okay. Well, see here's, so I'm, I'll show you where it is, okay? Look, if you... Um... I don't know if you could see me. I can see. All right. So the area of the board that you're working on is this area. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. So if we go towards almost the top middle where the heat sinks are, in the middle of that cluster, there's this big black potentiometer. Let's see here. Usually that's in there. And it's on the right. It's on the same side. Okay. Wait, wait go back. A little bit. You stop right there. Right here. No, just a little bit to the right, where or towards the. Sorry, the other side. The other side. Stop right, right there. Okay. Yeah. And right next to those cluster of heat sinks, where you see the connections for the two cables going in, one's from the yoke. That's the red, green, blue, yellow cable. You see that? that uh, let's see here. Like yeah, where I see. it connects to the board. Yeah, I see the. Um, you see that oh, that black oh, spindle yeah. right there. Yeah, I do see it. Yep. That's that's the horizontal. I don't know why it's all the way over there, but that's yeah. the horizontal center adjustment. So you literally have to stick your hand back in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's the worst one out of all these, obviously, because it's stuck back there, and really, it just makes you nervous to do it. But yeah, it definitely does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's. That's the that's the horizontal one. There's not. Uh, you know. What should I be wary of accidentally touching as I stick my hand back there? Well, you know, the, you don't really want to touch any of these flyback cables, okay? Okay. Yeah. Anything, any of those red or black cables. The other cables are insulated. There's nothing coming off of them. If there was a spark coming off of you know, it'd be going crazy. If there yeah. was a short or something, so. It's, it's insulated, so it doesn't matter if you brush up against those cables. What you de the, the problem that happens the most is you stick your arm in there, and you're mm -hmm. looking at the front of the screen, yep. and your elbow could touch uh, a piece of metal or somewhere else, and you basically make a small ground, and you get a little zap, okay? All right. So, like, you know, if your elbow were to hit the back of the input board on the metal part, Mm -hmm. Then you could make a short through your elbow and then your arm will be zapped kind of like with, I mean, it's not a huge amount of voltage, but it, it would be like a, it's a small shock. It's like a electrical fence, but that's what would happen worst is if you make a short in your arm by tapping it against something else. So All that's right. why I was saying that's the hardest thing, but obviously if you get your arm back in there and just, you know, spin that a little bit, that's how you have to center it, unfortunately, on this thing. Okay. Uh, if you don't, you know, obviously if you're going to do it, just put the camera down and yeah, 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 for sure. Don't worry about any of that. Just try to make sure you're as clear as possible. All right. Well, let me, let me see. If and I that can... you've got enough room. You yeah. Know, I'm going to have to probably move stuff around that. a little bit. Cause yeah, I, I mean, thankfully I have skinny fingers. So we'll yeah, see. you just got to get back there and pinch it and spin it a little bit and do it, you know, ever so slightly and try to get it a little bit to the tour, you know, center. You see, that's the problem is so you gotta look at the front of the I, screen. Ooh. I wanna ask one quick question about sure. the route that I can go in. So if I were to go in this way, like those black cables look like they're no-nos, right? You don't wanna go that way. What so you I wanna go in through this way. No, like you'd see, you wanna try to reach around back okay. through the area where you were working. Yep. You have to like skinny your arm 
Yeah. That. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. That, yeah, like that direction back in towards there. All right. Oh, um, I've got I've got thin arms, so here we go. Yeah, so just take it slow oh, and you'll be fine. Yeah, that is. Now, if you don't want to. I just don't want that. Oh, there goes the camera. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, don't worry here. Let's see. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. Just try like, to. Uh, I think, that. I mean, I think I can do it. I, I'm actually just more nervous. I've got like thin girl hands. So well, once you, yeah, well, it's, you know, that's what this all is about. It's pretty much just nervous. Once you do it, it gets more comfortable and you realize what's not, you can't really hard. hurt yourself. Ow. Ooh. Something was hot. But yeah, not. those heat sinks are hot. They will get hot. Right. I just can't see what I'm doing over here. Yeah. Um, It's not, it's kind of stuck. We might not, I mean, if you can't get it, like I said, it's not the end of the world. What you can do. I got to move in a little bit. Here we go. Okay. I was going to say you can turn the monitor off, turn it a little bit, and then turn the monitor back on and check your results for that one. Yeah, I think I'm doing all right here. Okay. My hand out and take a look. Okay. That heat sink is hot, but other than that, nobody yeah, can. there's a bunch of heat sinks. It definitely gets the the temperature will get up down there. That's definitely like a hundred degrees. Oh yeah, I felt it. All right. I, I think I over adjusted it just a touch, but um, okay, we'll get back and we'll, we'll be in business. That's for the, that's kind of the hardest thing you're gonna have to deal with today. It's like playing Operation, <laughs> real life game of Operation. I prepare my whole life for this. Yeah, I'm gonna actually. If uh, there we go. I think that's good. Okay. Well, take yeah, that's good enough. Let's take a look at it. Take a look here. I'll uh, bring this back over. Let me see what this looks like. Okay, great. Oh, you know what I can do here? Um, I forgot to do this one second. I'll be right back. We'll turn on the yeah. overhead lights. Give a little bit more light. Well, I, yeah, I mean, it should, but when I see the screen, it looks fine. I just can't see the edges too much, but yeah. Yeah, they are, they're about the same size now. Um, okay. It's definitely so moved over. A little bit of dark on each side. Yep. Just a little bit of dark on each side. That's right. Okay. So now um, I'd say let's go back and look at that, you know, geometry screen, the, the grid pattern really quickly. Yep. And pull that up and then. Let me look at the uh, potentiometers again. I'll get back. It's super annoying that that edge doesn't show up. Yeah, it's uh, that's that's odd because on when I use a Super Nintendo, it's always there. But like you say, it must be something with the how the ROM's showing or something. Yeah, I, that's on one extra line of pixels or something. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have the rest of the stuff we're worried about is horizontal size, which we already know where that is. Vertical size, we know where that is. The next one is the pennant, and um, the pin amp is the is will make it exp it, it it gives it that Boeing bubble, or yeah. then you start to bend it, and it goes opposite where it becomes like an hourglass. Okay? Right. Yep. So there's a happy medium in there where you kind of have to just turn that. Let me. Let's see if we get a. Can you go? Let's try the linearity pattern. I hate sure. to keep telling you to change this. Let's try that. Uh, and if you press A on that, it pulls up another grid that uh, actually yeah. has more lines on it. Yep. So uh, let's see if. Um, so, you know, you want to try to get those lines on the edge as straight as possible. And the way you're going to do that is just turning that pin amp. Uh, back and forth till right. you know it looks straight. Now, just remember, it is probably it's still going to be best to curve probably tiny bit towards the inside. Yeah, it, the it honestly end. looks. I mean, it to doesn't me, look it, bad to me. I don't know that. Yeah, it's it, much better to be honest. But yeah, it looks like at least on the side here where I can see the edge, yeah. it looks pretty straight. 
Like it looks consistent. The gapping looks consistent from top to bottom to me. And it yeah. doesn't seem significantly different over here either. Okay. So, Good. I mean, I don't see it. I don't see too much on there that would make me worry about it. Um, because again, if you expand that out, all of a sudden those corners will bend outwards instead of right. inwards. And right. Uh, so what you might want to do is just by, is just kind of expand your edges just a tiny bit, you know, till I like to do it so that the, um, you know, back on that other screen that the dot pattern is almost your edge for everything. Okay. It, it's somewhere between the dots on the red and the outer red line. That's kind of like the middle overscan area. That's a good place that, so you won't end up with a lot of edges when you're actually playing the games. So yeah, I try to aim where I where I'd go from this point and expand the whole picture out. And what I mean by expand is like tweak first the let's say horizontal size to make it okay. larger. Yeah. To where your edge, like you go past actually the red line. You see the red okay. line. The yep. first red line goes slightly past that to where the edge is uh, not to the dot, but okay you know, maybe the a line. third of the way between the dot, a third of the way in towards, so you have two thirds of a black spot between the dot and your edge, but you okay. won't see the red. Uh, you won't see the red. I'll take a look and try to do that. Yeah, so first try that, and we'll do that with the uh, uh, vertical and the horizontal okay. size. And then as, it, as you expand that, it'll, um, It'll look a little better. So yeah, just go back the start. So the horizontal again is the first blue one. Blue one yep. On there. So about you said about a third. Yeah, to where there's a yeah. So you won't see the red line anymore. Okay. So I'm seeing it like this. Yes. Now as we're looking at it, just real quick, press and go back to the main blue screen so that we could just see what it looks like. Okay, do you see any darkness on either side? No. Or is it all blue pretty much? It's all blue. Okay, that's definitely right at the edge because if you did it any less, I know on that pattern it would be dark. So you got it. That's pretty well tuned up right in there. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing with, the, with it vertically. And um, yeah, so you'll want to actually push that to where it's the same thing. Now, obviously in the corners, it's going to be more compact and closer. Sure. Than, so you, you use the center of your screen at the top and the bottom to judge that. Okay. Yep. We'll do one second. Yeah. And the vertical size one is the opposite potentiometer all the way on the other side, that big, uh, unique blue one. This one right here. Yes. The one that we were just using. Yeah. Or no, let me make sure. No, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, that says vertical center. Oh that's yeah, right, right. One. I'm glad I didn't change. Okay, vertical size. I'm sorry. That's the one right next to the one you just adjusted, the small blue one for the scary. Uh, right yes, the, the one right next to that um, is vertical size. Yep. So try the same procedure with that, and then let us know uh, what it looks like afterwards. So this is what it looks like after I pushed it a little bit there. Yes, that's good. And, that, and I'll be honest with you, that's, that looks very good to me for, again, this one is much more difficult because it's, it's you know, rudimentary. It's, right. it's got the, uh, obviously, all potentiometers, no service menu. Right. For, like, you ha you, this one's not been recapped or anything, right? No, it hasn't. It's, I mean, that looks really, really good for one that's never been recapped, you know? That's yeah, like, no, this one, um, I don't know if it was used much. Yeah. I got it from a guy who used to service arcade stuff. Okay. And he gave me two, and this was the cleaner one of the two in terms of the image. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, like, the brightness on it is great. Like, the tube seems to be pretty pretty strong still. Um, yeah. I, I have the brightness actually turned down just a touch right now. The, those ones, I, I know that um, they are really a pain to kind of dial in, and they don't have as many bells and whistles, but the tubes always look amazing on them. It's like the same line count is anything like an M2 or um, L2, any of the newer ones, the picture can look almost the same. The only thing is they have more controls, you know, modernized yeah. yep. and, and different things. So 
these ones can still produce great pictures and that looks pretty good so uh what i would do now is just oh, okay so i just got to notice that we hit 40 minute time limit but we'll get a little bit extra time so if this if this does kick kick us out of here uh i'll go back and i'll post another meeting okay everybody if you hear me you know just note that i'll post a new meeting in patreon and then we'll just come back and we can we can have a q a and stuff after that um so this is looks good to me i would just uh check a couple of different screens you can go to the linearity screen yep again with the um loops and I, yeah i don't even see a need to make a linearity adjustment okay that looks really circular so that's good and it looks let's much go, better than it did. Uh, all right, let's check the go back one screen to the main menu on that test pattern. Uh, you just this, press B. No, I'm sorry. Go back, uh, press back to the, there we go. Yep. All right, let's go down and check our scroll test after that. Yes. And do that and just speed it up a little bit. How do I do that? Press, I think you press up on the controller oh, yeah. and then you can press down to slow it down a little bit, stuff like that. I don't see any tearing or warping as it does that. That's what you're supposed to look for here. It looks, looks really, really smooth to me. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, I don't see any like abnormalities or, you know, warping or linearity. That's what, that's another way to check that linearity is this scroll test. You're I supposed see. to see if there's like a bubble in your picture and, and there's definitely not. So, that I mean, that looks good. Do you do what do you think? You have any other questions about it? I'm super happy with it. I think the only other question that I had with any of this stuff was um, when I was looking at the color test. It seemed that the gr the gray was a bit green. Okay. But um, but when I see like when I see an actual game or if I see this screen, everything looks fine. Yeah. So, okay. Go down to uh, there's a color test pattern and where is it? it says it should say red green and blue there it is white red and green blue screen yep. white and rgb screen click that and then go to your red and cycle through uh i think you press either a or um let's see it's it's something it up gives down. me controls of each one of them like everything is at 255, yeah, 255, 255. Should, but you should be able to go where it should just show red and blue and green and black, basically. I can't remember. I think it just hit a button. There you go. There we go. Okay. Red. Is that red. And then green, blue. I mean, they look good. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it looks good to me. I can show you on the back where you can make a color adjustment. It's the I same. It's the same way. I mean, I, I, I think that maybe you're probably better off just playing with that if you want to. Yeah, I think it's I okay think to, to play with it. But, uh, yeah. but just, just in case you do, I'll go through it real quick and show okay. you what it is. Yep. So yeah, get set up and then I'll, I'll show everybody here on my little uh, cutout. Now, they, there are some like weird potentiometers, but other than the ones we pretty much went through, the majority of them, you're not really gonna wanna use, you know, there's, uh, anybody yeah. who comes and watches this i mean i like just the rest of these on here while, while you're getting ready i mean they go through things like the under there's an under scan button so you can tweak the geometry of that if the screen was tilted or angled in a strange way there's a couple of changes you can make for that like a vertical angle uh but that wasn't on yours thankfully so yeah. the uh when you're looking you don't have to pick the camera up but when you're looking down from the top yeah. on your monitor you see the v board that's on the other side that's yeah. kind of expanded up and yes, it's got it. it's got you know set two lines of potentiometers uh with it's got 11 potentiometers on the board total right like two sets of five yep. and then one by itself yep okay so the one that's by itself controls the sub brightness so okay. if your monitor now yours didn't look this way but if your monitor was either too dim or overly bright, just in its normal mode, you could go in here and spin that and make an adjustment to your brightness setting 
beyond what it does on the front. I see. And then if we looked at both of those things here, it's kind of interesting because there's not a green adjustment on here. It's mm -hmm. just red and blue. Uh, I see. And not only that, but it's, it's sectioned out here in a couple of ways. First, it'll say 9,300 degrees Kelvin, or I think yep. that's what the K is. Yep. So that's the color temperature, like almost a color palette. There's a little switch on the back of the monitor yep. that says 9,300 and 6,500. Yep. Those are two different color settings that are built into the monitor. So adjusting the reds and blues, you can do that. Uh, each one of those has a, a, you know, a different effect. Like there's two for, for each of those colors. Some monitors have all the colors. So they'll have two for each color, including green. Unfortunately, I don't know why some of these early ones don't, but they just have red and blue. So this is only going to affect those color palettes individually, those color right. temperatures. So like you'd, you'd have it set on that one color temperature and adjust this set of four. And then you can move over and you can adjust that set of four. And then if you look next to that, it actually has two by itself that just say RGB. And yeah. so those are just the straight blue and red drives for RGB. So while you're using it in RGB, that's just going to increase or decrease the intensity of the blue and red color. Yeah. Um, overall, as it's sitting and going into the tube. Now, this monitor also has some adjustments for all the colors on the front of it. Yeah. And those two can be tweaked uh, by hand. You got to stick a small screwdriver there. Don't worry. There's no chance of getting any electricity or, you know, shorting right. anything that way. But that's another way you can try those ones on the front for a quick adjustment. And those tend to be easier gain and bias right yep. there uh, in the front of the monitor. You just stick a potentiometer or a, a screwdriver that fits in there and it'll, it'll adjust that. Okay. I think it looks good. And yeah, I, I do too. Like when I only noticed it on the gray test bars, but when I'm looking at just a, a game or a screen, it, it looks pretty sharp and, you know, perfectly colorful to me. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm, I'm good with it. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, well, did you have any other questions? I, I can. No, I, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, so let me see if I can get this set up here. So. <laughs> All right. Excuse Great. my messy office, but no, man, it's good. Thank you so good much. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, it was so, awesome. Yeah, um, and I'm still alive, so that's a win. Yeah, you made it. Uh, yeah. I'm going to ask anybody to unmute if they want to. They can. If you want to type anything in the chat, I think we only got a couple of people here. Thanks for uh, hanging out, Alex and Frank. And that's a couple of your stuff. by and I'll repost this. Uh, with again, I'll try to put pictures over it of because I've actually got some pictures on the screen, and I don't know that Zoom will always work out. Maybe we'll try something different because I'd like to be able to pull up some stuff just on my desktop that to help show. Um, so anyway, uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. If not, it's okay. We can cut this one short uh, and be done. But. Um, I'll just say thanks for the support and everything, and maybe we can keep do working on CRTs. I got some crazy one um, coming in the mail. It's uh, I don't even know. Let me check. Somebody actually sent it to me on eBay, the link, and then asked me to restore it. It's an old, old, untested almost. Let's see. a Tandy computer CRT. So that's like something from the really early 80s. I thought it would be interesting, but. I do have uh, one question for you. Um, when you do like a full restoration, like I've watched the videos and everything, but how long does it normally take for you to, you know, pull, fully disassemble it, check all of the caps, you know, redo all the caps, and just to, out of curiosity? Well, it's, it varies, I guess, depending on the monitor. See, if um, like the one that I worked on for the Commodore, that yeah. was really easy because the board's big, easy. Uh, you know, I can like get all those caps out with that thing in like 20 minutes. And then okay. it's not really that hard to take one like, so that one's a lot more simple. But when you get into the more complex stuff, it takes more time. And um, the more modern the board is like, that board you're working on, it, it's, I mean, it's got stuff all over the place, but it's not, 
as modern. So a lot of the components aren't as tiny and mm. it's, it's easier to work around. So uh, like, you know, recapping this is actually more simple than generally working on like M series. I have a lot of people that unfortunately like damage their boards mm. to where like they'll try to recap it. And, and it's, they could be <laughs> exactly why like, I want to ask uh, you today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like, that's what I've got like two or three people that have been asking about that. I, I did it earlier this year too. And, and I, it made me so mad that I, I just put the thing away and I have it like, it's in the back burner. It's a, it's a uh, Olympus OEV 203. It worked mm. fine for a while. And then the power supply just started going wacky. It had been recapped like a year ago. And mm. the power supply started acting wacky. One day it started doing this on the screen. And I was like, what the heck? And so I couldn't figure it out. And uh, that's how I learned about the power supply test I showed I don't, in the last M series video where you take the voltmeter and check all that. I, I got on the phone with Pat, save on Pat for like 30 minutes. And he was like, oh, let me tell you how to check this. So you could check if the problems from the power supply or the board itself. So you can eliminate whether it's a power supply problem or the board on the main board. Um, but what, I, I'm not sure what happens, whether when you turn it back on, it sends a short down. I, I feel like this one that I had did something like that where eventually I kept trying to mess with it and it sent a volt, bad voltage down and it blew probably a resistor somewhere. And I just haven't had the time to go back. I mean, you could thankfully check resistors uh, in line. Uh, I did find a tool that actually checks capacitors uh, in, in series that's like high quality, but it's a used tool and it still sells for 300. And oh, it's, just wow. a little, it's just a little meter. It's like, and, but it works like it's got, it's well known in the arcade industry is like the top thing. And I, I want to get one, but it's not, um, it's not something I bought yet. And that's kind of what I was waiting. I have a couple of boards here that I'm just kind of waiting to see if that will help eliminate a lot of time testing. So basically uh, that's when you start getting into the more extreme troubleshooting where you have to figure out where the problem is on the main board that's been damaged on an individual line. You know? So what the, the power supply does is it sends the power to the main board and um, so if your power supply is good, when you check it on 12 volt and five volt, then you know the power supply is good, but it's sending that power into the main board and then somewhere you're having a short. So most of the time, if you have a short on the five volt, the power will still come onto the tube, but you'll just get no picture. You could feel, you know, the static on there. Other times, if the, if the higher voltage is out, then generally you don't get any voltage on the tube. And what can happen, I mean, there could be a short somewhere, unfortunately, anywhere on the line. If you look at like a schematic for the M series and you look at that board, it's all in the service manual. You, you know, you'll look at a board and it'll tell you where all the five volt comes in and goes on that line and then it tells you what components are attached to the line the electrical line and you have to go through and either replace them test them and see which ones failed to basically be able to troubleshoot it yeah that's, that's where I, I feel like i'm stuck right now is that i'm i'm good enough at this stuff to follow directions but yeah. um like after i did the recap i double checked everything it looked good plugged everything in triple checked that and then the monitor turned on um for maybe 10 seconds made mm. kind of a awkward screeching noise like no popping or anything something like that yeah and yeah. yeah and then i let it discharge for like 10 minutes and then when i took a look at it they um the power it just is not supplying any power anymore um mm. so i ordered some more fuses but uh you know other than doing like simple multimeter tests like i'm not really sure what else to do yeah well and that's what i'm like i know it's gonna it's probably gonna be something that uh i mean obviously i've got one here and i don't want to have it you know just be sitting here as a dead mm -hmm. 203 and somebody else that um you know they supposed to that's why i couldn't take yours right away is because they're supposed to be sending me theirs first and then whenever i can hopefully get if i get theirs fixed 
then you'll be, you know, I'll tell you, send yours in. We'll do the same thing. Or I'll tell you how I, obviously I'll tell everybody how I fixed it if I get it done. But when I talked to Pat, that's what he said. He said, it's just a, it's just a bear. It's a time waster. You get, you got to really have kind of a certain level of tools, which unfortunately, like I said, Mm -hmm. um, I've not got that cap tester, so I can't go in and quickly just check the caps in line. I got to pull them out and test them to see if the caps are bad, but not, uh, you know, there's something going on in there where when we send the power back through, somehow it's short and I'm not sure what's happening. Yeah. I, and, I talked to Pat too. And he yeah. was saying that the M series have like notoriously faulty power, power bricks, yeah. but um, also looking at the cap kit and that you sent me versus uh, the service manual, I found four that are different, um, but I'm yeah. not sure whether the difference is, an upgrade and intentional or uh is uh just a, a copy paste error because there's one you list in there the um the 1504 which doesn't exist mm -hmm. on the a board in the service manual and i can't find it on the board either yeah now there are so there were different um releases on those boards oh so okay there are tiny differences in build outs and yeah you I believe that's one of them that I, there's some of them that I don't always, and that's still, you know, somewhat of a work in progress. However, the changes in the caps, a couple of them are basically come directly from what I had been kind of told by Pat on what mm -hmm. he had recommended years ago um, for upgrades on some of them. So the, the, a couple of them did have service bulletins that mm -hmm. like Sony later came out with like the blanking circuit and those two caps, two of those were supposed to be changed in that different. So the 15 of four though, yeah. So there's again, and then the same thing with the power supply, there is actually some power supplies in the M series that have like three additional caps that are just not populated and some of them too. So there are some where that's not populated. Um, so, you know, the th it's, it's kind of stinky because Sony sent these manuals out and then they were really secretive about sending out the updates. Um, I, had, I didn't even know the updates existed till a couple, maybe a year after I got into really working on them and somebody reached out to me and told me, and they actually sent me a copy of the one about the blanking and how Sony had said that there was a problem with that one always. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to change the caps on there and then like i said i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure why uh that is the case that it is this the, uh, the last guy who's supposed to send his boards and i asked him to send in his old caps with him and so i was going to go back and um i was going to test all those caps make sure they were still in spec and then I've, I've had to go back sometimes and reinstall old caps. I don't, I don't know why it's weird on some of these monitors. One of them, another one for an example was a 20 L five I'd worked on and I got a cap kit on for that one directly from Pat. And he actually had an upgrade in one of the caps on there. And when I put the upgrade in, it actually screwed the geometry at the top of the screen up like immensely to the point where it was just crazy. It made a big, uh, tilt at the top of the screen and I had to go back in and I just tested the old cap and, and went back and, and backed it down to what it originally had said. So, uh, you know, un, un, I, I, it's, it could be anything. There's, well, causing, I wanna, causing I a power figure search like that, is it, is it like, what do you think would be most likely? Is it uh, well, he said, a wrong he cap told or is me it a, that, like a, did I install one backwards and I just know, can't see it or? Well, they all should have a little marking, you know, on the board and they all should face the same directions mm -hmm. on that one. It, it, one or uh, only two directions. So they shouldn't swap. I've actually had people put the caps in backwards before and had them work. I, I couldn't believe it. I did have one guy, <laughs> put, he put one of the caps in backwards and six months later, he's like, I have vertical screen collapse. And I said, oh, send no. me a picture of your board. And he had one in backwards and it had swollen up like a balloon. Oh, yeah. Like I mean, they months. will ex they will explode or so swell. That's, what, if that's backwards. I was like, oh, my goodness. And so he that, caught that it is. in time and it didn't damage it. But 
I know that like that's the easiest thing to check is that, but it's definitely, you know, once you go back, it's more frustrating because you know you didn't do that. Um, Pat told me that there are traces maybe built into the board that we don't see that I'm wondering if might get damaged a little bit when extracting mm -hmm. the caps. Like maybe there's a trace somewhere on the board that you can't physically see on the po top of the circuit board, or it's so small, it's microscopic, the, the trace that ends up breaking. I'm hoping that's the case. I don't know. Like, again, until I pull that, I'll have to pull this caps out of it and then look at probably each one on, on there uh, really close up. And then, um, and then hopefully find out because it's either that or what I'm thinking is maybe some kind of voltage surge happens and it's shorting out a resistor somewhere uh, or something like that that's causing it to stop. Now, what Pat told me is that the caps in the M series are um, in the power supply are great. He said the caps, mm -hmm. he said, he said the caps are amazing in that uh, when they built it, but he said, the problem is the ICs are, are not good. So those ICs, there's like a, a half a dozen on that board, uh, different regulators and, and uh, really complex ones with like, eight pins on them. He is there those, any physical damage when those fail? Uh, sometimes the pop tops of them will blow off like, mm -hmm. and it'll be black because it basically fries. Other times they'll fail and you have to pull them out of circuit and, and take a voltmeter and go down and see where voltage is passing through them and, and just give like a QC check based on the, on the data sheet and see if it's, if it's still working. Uh, another thing that can blow is the hot on the main board. Mm -hmm. Now you know which one that is. The main um, transformer. Whatever, is that the one that has all the coils around it? It's. Let me see. No, if you look at like uh, your board, this one will have one. So it's gone here. It's the. It's on the big heat sink usually. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the biggest one. It's a three prong chip. Oh, it's okay. generally right next to the flyback in that area. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's a main part that can short out and blow out. And um, so, but the problem is, is if you don't fix your problem and you install a new one, you're, I've had the, one, the, o, the OEV that I worked on, it was terrible because I, repl I replaced it and I replaced this part and the screen came on for like five minutes and I thought it fixed. And then after five minutes of just running, it just went and it blew the, uh, the new hot out again. Oh man. So um, I, I did find a place to get replacements of those actually somehow locally within an hour of me that sells old ones uh, because I did have to buy them from like China for like way more money because they mm -hmm. were just, they're just out of production. Uh, but hopefully I can nail this. It, it stinks because it's it's just something that there's not a direct answer to, really. Yeah. Yet, so at least I don't have the direct answer <laughs> to it yet. I mean, but, it seems like at least the best solution for me would be just to hang tight while yeah, you do some R and D. Now, for now, because that's what I'm having to do, even kind of till. Um, but it's something that, like, at least with the one I had, I spent goodness, I spent probably five hours working on it, and it just didn't work out. So, Mike, that's another example. Sometimes I work on stuff and I, I can't. It's like a bottomless pit. I can never get it fixed. Just keep throwing hours into it. That's um, yeah. My own it is, um, you know, some stuff it can be really, really quick. I actually had somebody bring back a monitor that was an Ikigami, and um, and I should have made a video on it because it was a cool little troubleshoot. But basically, his picture just went out, and those things are terrible for heaven. Uh, cold solder joints show up and that's what this one did but i was able to just use a voltmeter and like within five minutes figure out where uh the short was and uh it's just basically checking voltages to make sure the voltage is going where it's supposed to not that you actually know how much voltage is needed you just need to make sure there's actually current running to a spot and if it's not running to the spot that it's supposed to then that kind of narrows it down but it's it could be a real, you know, it, sometimes it's that. Sometimes you get that fixed and it, it doesn't work. <laughs> the, I had a, the, here, this is a terrible story. 
but the guy who uh, had got the, if you guys have seen the video I did last year at the end of the year on the big Mitsubishi, really old one that had all that corrosive damage on the power supply. Yeah, I remember he, that. He, he lived in South Carolina. He brought that over here and dropped it off months before this. I fixed it, came and got it, and um, the road was so bumpy between here and there. He got it home and it, it developed a short because I like tested it and had it running for two hours solid oh, like before he picked it up. And uh, yeah, he got it home and it could, it just, it would stay on and then turn right off. And I was like, man, it's so that was like the most depressing one was to see that because you're just like, man, I, were, I was hoping that. And I try to, you know, but you still, even stuff like that, you can't really help. Um, and, and sometimes you don't know that you know, if you, you're buying these monitors or finding them, you don't know if somebody else I've seen or somebody else has tried to repair something and made mistakes yeah. or done bad repair work that's really eaten up their boards later. But, you know, in a general, uh, the ones that I like to recap are the ones that are from the 90s. Um, the ones that really need it, at least for now, eventually they'll all need it, but some of them can still generally go pretty good uh, if they were made after the year 2000 ish and uh, like the, the I got a 2030 in the shop those always tend to need the deflection board recapping at least make them look good yeah, I feel fortunate I have a 20 l5 right next to this one right now and yeah that one's good um, I ended up buying it from a guy and he uh, he was like you know I can't be sure of the hours but the picture is nice and bright and sharp and it's it's so bright that I had to turn it down and it's yeah. just perfectly sharp. And it's like, that one is, that's the one that when I really want to play something and see it look best, that's, that's the one I go to. Yeah. That's a good one. The, uh, the 2005 is, it's really great because if, um, like I've got a D I've got a D 20, I don't have a 2005 anymore. I actually, um, the last one, another patron bought it, uh, at the uh, beginning of November. And, uh, but I do still have the D20 and it, it's cool, but it has like the same, you know, tube and does the same things and it's got a lot mm. more hardware, but it's literally way bigger, mm. uh, as far as size and weight, like it's a good four or five inches longer, I feel like. Mm. So it's really deep. Whereas the 2005, they actually compacted that and, and, uh, like my 1405 is that's my favorite little go-to monitor if i want to like do something real quick or test something because mm -hmm. it's just so easy to move around even yeah yeah i'd like to pick up a 14 at some point but yeah, yeah. now they're it's when you see them and what they cost oh, i know i mean i'll I trade just... you mike <laughs> <laughs> got a couple no trades, no trades. <laughs> it's um yeah those ones are all over the place yeah um, but did anybody else, I mean, Alex, did you have anything else? Um, I mean, I'll definitely, we'll keep, you know, posted on this and keep working on it as we go. It's definitely something that obviously I've, I've been working on. Yeah, for sure. I think, Relatively um, quickly, I was just, I was just looking for some next steps. I was trying to be as meticulous and quadruple check <laughs> everything as much as I could before asking yeah. more questions. But I think like where I'm stuck on is like, do I install the old caps and then try to replace the fuses and the power and try to bring the power back online? I mean, you could um, definitely try that if you wanted to and see, or mm -hmm. um, you can also take your meter and I believe that you should be able to test resistors. And if you want to go and look in the manual and try to find certain resistors, just to check and see if any of them have blown uh, mm -hmm. along those paths that's what i've tried uh but again that's that's a pain because man there are so you talk about hard trying to find the resistors because there's like it's like find this one resistor and it'll be somewhere on that board and that's a tiny little piece but yeah. i've had uh like on the d20 i had a resistor short and the tube just went out like the picture just went out and it was just because of one little resistor that kept shorting it's and I amazing had to replace this stuff it. works at all yeah and, and oh that's why it, I can't believe that, you know, some people, that's what the scariest thing to me is, is uh, like <laughs> dropping almost 10 grand on some of those big monitors when there really is no guarantee that they'll last any, any time, unfortunately. 
yeah that's <laughs> that's the hard part it's like that's what i try to it's like you can do as much as you want but you never can tell the the best thing to do on the 2005 is just make sure that there's no dust built up because those do have short problems actually um where the dust builds up and it'll get a short on there mm-hmm. the uh cory uh you know at the last one i did on there was like cory from my life in gaming i actually talked to try and his shorted out over the last oh, couple wow. of months so he's like i need to get this to you because his unfortunately shorted out so yeah and yeah, I should probably open mine up and, and check for dust. That's the biggest problem. It builds up and it can't get out of there. Yeah. So, hey, Jay, thanks for joining. How you doing? All right. Yeah, hey, good. How are you today? Yeah, really good. Thank you. In Is the lovely UK. Out? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, like, <laughs> well, that's cool. Pretty horrible out here. <laughs> well, yeah, we were actually sorry. Just uh, we had finished up the repair, just kind of talking through some stuff. Um, and I didn't know if you had any questions or anything. We're just kind of opening it up before we get out of here. It was oh man, yeah. Sorry, uh, I, um, no, yeah, I, no, just or, you know, you've got any uh, questions? Um, have I got any questions? Um, I'm sure there is, but nothing that springs okay. to mind. Yeah, but... sorry, no pressure. Just no. Uh, I don't know if uh, I think we had asked everybody else. I think we had nobody else. I don't know anybody else had anything. Uh, I have a question. Um, okay, great. <laughs> I have a consumer fe. 310 that i got over the weekend mm-hmm. and uh can i like switch my camera here sure um i don't know if you can see how it's wobbling <laughs> now it's slowly like slowly getting larger and smaller yeah like yeah okay yeah i mean mm, the the ripple like that that's <laughs> I would think that would possibly be filter cap on the power supply area to check. Yeah. Uh, one of the s- smaller ones, because those are high frequency, they tend to burn out more. And generally, that's where you'd see kind of a consistent ripple like that. Uh, yeah. So that would be, uh, do you have, do you, I mean, are you capable or do you do any kind of repair work or anything? Uh, I've only done um, like just modding RGB modding consoles and stuff. Um, okay. Though I haven't really done like high voltage stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's something that you really care a bunch about and want to restore. I mean, it, it you know, it would be something that you probably need to get in and, and most likely recap, like uh, at least the power section right. of the board and anything too, that's really, close to like a heat sink and the um the the flyback transformer because there's a lot of current at a high frequency going through there and those are the ones that tend to wear out the quickest uh a lot of the other areas on the board where you don't have the same levels of heat then you won't have uh those caps can last you know forever if they because a lot of these areas uh, they won't even get up to you know much hotter than room temperature, which is not going to put stress on the capacitors, but definitely on your circuit board, whatever kind of board you're looking at, uh, anything that has these bigger heat sinks, and uh, there's not actually a flyback on this board, but there would be caps around that. And then sometimes too, uh, on these boards, there will be spots uh, next to the heat sinks, same kind of thing where your voltage is going in and out, that's a high voltage going to the yoke or the actual neck board. If there's any caps around that, uh, that's another place where especially smaller caps can dry out right, and then fail. And so uh, most likely it's one of those. Um, you know, if you wanted to try to like troubleshoot it a little bit, you could check your voltage on wherever a couple spots, you know, pick some spots where the voltage you can try to read if it's five volts and 12 volts and make sure there's a steady. And, and, you know, even if I think you, if you got it near where the, say if it's a high voltage, it's probably the 12 volt, but it, you could uh, measure and see if your voltage drops a lot from 12 volts 
And that okay. means that there's going to be a cap somewhere in that line that needs to be replaced. That's kind of that's kind of where I would go from there. It's probably best to do a full recap, though, right? Since I'm. I mean, if you different. want, yeah, it depends. Yeah, if you want it to make it, give it its best chance, because the tube still looks good if there's no screen burn, and uh, the times that the tube can go bad, I feel like I feel like that it's when you get a faster. Uh, that's most of the time when a tube. I'd be worried more about a tube having a short if it was a quicker jitter all over the whole screen, like really fast. Right. So uh, that's, that, that can be a tube where the tube is just kind of worn out if it gets that or the flyback. Uh, but it, it doesn't make any funny noises or anything when it's turned on. Um, not really. Like if sometimes if I have a full like white grid up, um, I'll have, I'll hear like a little bit of wine, like coil wine. Yeah. That's kind of normal. But yeah, like no, it's other than that, I think okay. it's okay. I mean, I do have I do have geometry, like some weird geometry issues. Um, yeah, that is like exacerbated by the wobbling. <laughs> I'd definitely try to recap it if you want it, if you want it to like use it for a long time, because right. you don't want to use it like that where it's going to do that. And I'm sure that over time it'll just probably get worse the more hours you put on it. I uh, think that one too is. Um more well documented than others yeah there's a good possibility that there you could easily find a service manual for that and there might even be uh a lot of times i still google stuff on there and, and find you know reddit threads or something yeah i found someone that made like a full like list of ca capacitors for the for the tv um, that's good yeah that's that's waste that's a way step ahead um most of the time so yeah, but, I just go ahead and try that recap. And uh, what I was going to say about the noise, uh, if if the you know if there's weird whining and it dips and dops, that's you know the flyback. You can hear sometimes you can hear, not everybody can, but the high frequency pitch it makes out. Um, but if there's a problem with the flyback, you can generally hear it make like a weird dip sound, where it's just not putting out the consistent high level because that's supposed to put out a really quick current that drops in intensity and, and then goes back up to a high voltage and drops and does that over and over and over again. And if that wears out, that, then you get a gap in between that drop and then it makes a funnier noise. Uh, so, but if, you're, if you don't hear like a funny drop in noise norm, when it's just normally running, then the flyback's probably still okay. I mean, I've not really run into too many situations where the flyback's bad. That's a relief. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> most of the time. I've not, um, not on these. I know in arcades, you know, those have so many hours on them, though. Arcade machines, uh, they generally do have to, some people will replace them. But you never really want to replace one unless you definitely have to. Now, if you guys do, it has happened. Uh, and I don't even have the flybacks, but Save on Pat usually does. And he sells them for, I think, like 50 or 70 bucks or something. So it's nice to at least, you know, if you need one, uh, sometimes he has them. He's still going at it at like mid 80s. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, occasionally, I, I dropped in a few emails. Usually, I, I answered my own questions just sending him an email and detailing the you know, really going into details into troubleshooting, and then half an hour later, I solved the issue. <laughs> so yeah, we went like, back oh. to my own email, and say, "Oh, thanks, just writing to you helped me solve the problem." It's I, just like I, finding something in the fridge, like you have to ask where it is, and then all of a sudden it appears. Yeah, he. Uh, I try to take it easy on him, so I, whenever I email him, I just like. Uh, it's last resort. We'll, we'll be like, "Do you have this part?" Or if I ever do need anything long, I always just send him, hey, can you just give me a call at your convenience? And then I end up being on the phone with him for like 30, 45 minutes. And he's always like, I got to go. I got to get out of here. And so I feel kind of bad because I'm just, anytime I get to talk to him, I'm just trying to, you know, any trick that he knows, I'm like, you got to tell me before, you know, he won't be doing it anymore. And then nobody, uh, you know, the, the thing that, and I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but I talked to him for a long time. And he, before he worked for Sony, he worked for B and K testers, which makes the tube 
testers that I've actually got one. I've been restoring it. The problem is I haven't made the adapters for it because there's, it's this one we'll work on. There's few models that will work on PVMs and BVM tubes as a tester and even as a recharger. So if you have a bad tube that doesn't have burn in it and it doesn't have a specific color completely out, you can potentially recharge it. Uh, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it's short still, but anyway, he worked for the company that designed and he was the lead engineer, like design and sell those and service them. He went all over the world, like giving presentations on this machine that was used to rejuvenate all the tubes. And then he was approached to go work for Sony and, and he was in the lead of their, you know, the, the cutting edge, which would have been Hollywood in the nineties and two thousands when they were using CRTs and he was just servicing them uh, to every production studio or production business in California. But he personally, you know, I, ta I talked, found out that he like his dad was, I think his dad was some kind of engineer, electrical engineer. And so Pat was apparently working on circuit boards since he was like 10 in his dad's shop. So, yeah, I mean, that's like 70 years of, and he knows like everything. He's got every tool and he's like, you know, so it's uh, that's why it's like always to me, it's like just just getting a chance to speak to him a little bit is just I'm sure it drives him crazy because he could probably sit on the phone all day with guys like us who just call and you know, <laughs> get him to talk about stuff. But then at the end of the day, he'd be exhausted just talking to us. But well, Steve, I think you've kind of turned into that person for all of us here. <laughs> Slowly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're definitely well, on your way going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I. Well, I, uh, I had a question, if you didn't sure. mind, Steve. Um, so I've got these two monitors. I, I messaged you the other day. Yes. And I said, I got, yeah, yeah. and um, I've, I've got them somewhere here, much to my wife's chagrin. But um, <laughs> I, I found somebody, funnily enough, today who's going to work on them. So if anyone okay. is in the UK, I'll send you a link to anyone who oh, else. Oh, yeah, be great. Yeah, make, a, make either a post or send me a message, and I'll make a post about it. And um, if you find them and you want to get... Um, I can send you, you know, the cap lists and stuff that I've got for oh, you thank you. through email and then he can use them um, or any of that That'd stuff. That'd be amazing. And uh, the one, I remember you saying the one that was like in locked in a, into a mode, right? Yeah. It, it's got a, yeah. what, the tally light and none of the buttons work? Uh, yeah, that's right. The um, the left hand side to so the 16 by 9, the overscan, those buttons work, but the buttons to the right oh, and the speaker okay. doesn't work. The, uh, the knobs like the chroma phase control and okay. volume yeah it's a bit, bit of a weird one i am um, i took the side off that i was going to ask you um mm -hmm. steve it, i think it's been reworked i don't know if you oh, can see no, that very well no, that's actually standard from sony so don't worry right they actually did put those jumpers in a lot of those uh that's not that's not been that's that's common so okay. um that's good to know yeah don't worry about that that's common what i would say is that maybe there's a disconnection. There's two cables at the very front of your board that connect the input board to the um, main chassis. There's two, you know, cable connections, like 10, 15 pins. One of those could be dislodged a little bit and just not connected. Or there could be a, a cold solder joint along that connection cable. Or... Um, I have had where something's wrong on the board and I imagine it's either, cause there's not much on that board, like the actual button board, but I've gone in and I've been in a situation one time where it was similar buttons. Some of the buttons weren't working. I had the extra board from a salvaged model and I just went and swapped the boards. And so something happened on the board where it was either, there's only really a couple of resistors on there and then the buttons. So my guess is it, I never actually fixed. I think I just threw it in a parts bin and forgot about it. But I'm guessing that there was either a resistor or a cold solder joint somewhere on that board that would have broken that current. Because uh, again, there's not much on that board. That, um, But that's like the easiest first thing would be just to see if that cable's dislodged at all. Maybe you're lucky and it is. Okay. And then you plug it back in and it will work. But okay. uh, that's... That's where I start with that one. That one sounds like it would probably have the potential to be a really good one if you just get it to work, that button board to work. It's funny, actually. Models? 
Yeah, so one is uh, older than the other one, and I took the back off both. And funnily mm -hmm. enough, the one that looks newer seems to have more issues, whereas the one that's been reworked um, has, has less issues. I know it sounds that's silly, possible. but j just to give you some context, it was pretty, um, really, really, really dusty in there yeah. to the point where um, it sounded like a bit of a fireworks factory with a crackle <laughs> when you turn them off. So uh, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, well, pretty messed up in there. I was just going to say, if they're both the same monitor and um, depending on whether one is, you know, if both of them aren't completely fixable, you could use the, you know, you could have your tech use the boards to make you one really awesome one. And that's, that's usually, that happens a lot where I'll have somebody bring in, I mean, the guy, I've got stacks of them here still that that's one of the things that's got a tube short problem and a bunch of them, but you know, like he brought, sometimes people bring in a couple of the same monitor that are in like really rough shape. And then we try to, I try to get, you know, one good one out of two bad ones. So I, I know for sure that you probably could do that. Cause I guarantee the button board, if the, if it's not the cable connection, more than likely it's something on that button board. And then that, okay. so, you know, worst case scenario, you could take it out of the other one that, that probably has a good button board and put it in this one and be fine. Um, but you know, either way, and if the other ones, if they're both savable though, you could, you know, have two and then, you know, have more than <laughs> just one in parts. <laughs> well, um, my wife seems to be thinking that I'm keeping one. So we'll see how that yeah, goes. Yeah, we'll see. There uh, you go. So you could just tell her the other one was just for parts and, and make sure it's uh, working. Oh yeah, absolutely. But thank you. I yeah, absolutely. That. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did anybody else have anything else here? I don't know how I can't surprise Zoom. I guess since it's the first time, they just let it roll on forever because I know we're well over 45 minutes. <laughs> All right. I don't see anything else. Anybody? Last chance? I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks, Steve. Mike. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Absolutely. thanks again for coming in, everybody. I will try to make this more of a frequent thing for sure, at least once a month. If you do have anything that like, you know, want to try like Mike did today and you want to have your topic, be it, let me know. And I'll definitely schedule you and we can work on it together and uh, just do whatever we can. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. This all right, is yeah, thanks awesome. guys. Yeah. Have it's amazing. Day, all right. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Take care. Everyone. Take care. Have a thanks, good Steve. one guys. Bye.